Hey VC, this is Jack. Welcome back to Vinyl Martini. I'm going to show some relatively recent finds. These are still finds from back in December. I had a, a banner month in December, bought tons and tons of records. And I haven't uh, shown them all yet, and I'm still in the process of doing that. Um, I'm going to show smaller batches. I tend to get really excited when I go to a record store and buy 20 or 25 records, and I want to show them all in one show, but I kind of that the videos get a little long so i'm going to cut them back a little bit hopefully a little shorter but before i start showing the records i just want to mention that uh, the vc has lost one of its own uh last weekend on sunday i think topper uh, passed away after a fairly lengthy illness topper's uh, uh channel was called uh, oddbox topper um very nice guy, very successful channel. He had almost 9,000 subscribers. And I want to mention him because a lot of the people I subscribe to uh, and people that subscribe to my channel were also subscribers for his channel. So uh, he was a lovely guy. Um, he'd been, I think he had a channel for about four years. He's one of the first guys that I ever watched on the VC and he really influenced me and uh, really inspired me to do my own thing. So I just want to pass on some condolences to his family, of course, and his friends, and all of us in the vinyl community who are going to miss him. He was what I'd call a southern hippie gentleman, and emphasis on gentleman. Very nice guy. So, let me get on to the records I'm going to show you today. And coincidentally, I'm going to show you uh, 10 years after, coincidentally, because this is one of the the records that Topper showed in the last year and a half that he was uh, when he was still doing his uh, when he was still doing his channel. This is ten years after their 1968 album Stonehenge. Uh, I wouldn't say it's one of their most brilliant records. It's a blues rock band, of course. Alvin Lee was the guitarist. I would say this is their third record, by the way, um, and I would say that they went into the studio with really no solid songs performed. A lot of these are jams. Some of them are just noodling around. I would say Going to Try was good. Uh, Hear Me Calling was fine. Uh, the Jam No Title is good. And uh, the last song, Speed Kills, is good. But there's, you know, they have some songs that are maybe 45 seconds long. Um, I used to think that was really cool when I was very, very young, but I think it's kind of a waste of studio time now. Like one of the songs is Scoobly Oobly Doo Bob. Another one is uh, Three Blind Mice. So they kind of uh, had a lot of throwaway numbers on here, but this is a good document for uh, document for the band, 1968, 10 years after. Next up, I have another Bobby Whitlock album. This is his, I think this is his third solo record. It's called Raw Velvet. It's looking mighty fine there. Uh, uh, purple crushed velvet uh, uh, formal jacket with a tie. Uh, Bobby Whitlock, of course, was uh, uh, worked with Eric Clapton on Layla. He worked with Delaney and Bonnie and Friends. Um, he worked with George Harris on All Things Must Pass. He's got a, he's got a channel that I've mentioned before. Just, it's called Bobby Whitlock, I think. Um, when he, uh, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. He has some great stories to tell. This record is his last, I think, for ABC Dunhill. So it's a little bit, I wouldn't say it's one of his best. His, the first one is called Bobby Whitlock, was pretty good. Uh, he does kind of Southern rock, uh, some soul songs, some gospel songs, some country songs, real mix. Uh, but talented guy, and I scoop this up because I just never know when I'm gonna see this out in the wild again. Next up is Country Joe and the Fish. This is my first Country Joe and the Fish album. It's called Together. And I'm buying it basically on Mazzy's recommendation. Um, they're a San Francisco rock psych band. Very well known, of course. Uh, they were uh, filmed at Woodstock. Uh, his Fixin' to Die rag, I think, uh, is his most uh, famous song. This is I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a classic record, but uh, there's some good songs on here. Uh, rock and Soul Music is a, a soul song, actually. Susan is good. Uh, good Guys, no, not that. Uh, da, 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 Bright Suburban, Mr. Clean Machine. Uh, 
Citation is good, and Untitled Process is good. So um, they only released four records, but uh, Massey just loves these guys. It's a pretty good record. It's again, it's another document of its time. I think it was released in '68, just before they uh, played at Woodstock. Uh, Country Joe. Um, they only did four records, like I said. I think they did their last record in 1970, and Country Joe went on to have a lengthy career releasing something like 30 records on his own. So, Country Joe and the Fish. Next up is a band called Badger. Um, Badger, uh, this is their second record, and Badger uh, has Tony K in it. Tony K used to be the keyboard player for Yes. Uh, he left after their second record and formed Badger. Uh, I think they recorded a live al album in 1971 or 1972 that was produced by John Anderson, and then they released this in 1974. But uh, by the time they released this, they had moved to the States and they took on uh, Jackie Lomax as guitarist, singer, songwriter. So this is not uh, a prog album at all. Uh, it's really a soul R&B uh, album. It's actually it's it's actually pretty good. It, it, it's a disappointment if you're expecting it to be a prog album with Tony K, but uh, it was recorded in New Orleans. Uh, Alan Toussaint. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Alan Toussaint or Alan Toussaint at his studios in New Orleans. So it's got uh, kind of a meters kind of funk beat to it. Uh, quite good actually. Quite enjoyable. I, I like that. And then coincidentally, in the same record store, I bought all of these records at Apollo Music in Port Coquitlam, BC, by the way, one of my favorite record stores that I only get to go to when I go visit my daughter in Vancouver. But this is the band Flash, and it is featuring England's Peter Banks, and it's called Out of Our Hands. Kind of a nice, sorry, hypnosis cover. Shot of the band. And of course, Peter Banks was the guitar player for Yes at the same time that Tony K was playing. And he uh, left after the second album because the second album was a little more orchestral and there wasn't very much for Banks or K to do. So they left on their own. They're still in, still had good relations with Yes, but um, this uh, Flash album is pretty good. It's it's almost, <laughs> you can tell that that, that uh, Peter Banks comes from Yes. It's very uh, yesish. Uh, it's a concept album, uh, songs that are linked. Um, and you can tell just like, like the, there's a lot of acoustic guitar on here as, as part of the bass tracks, uh, the, the, the bed tracks for the songs. Very, uh, very yesy. Singer sounds like uh, John Anderson as well. But this is their third record, I think. Well worth having. Um, bought it cheap. This cost me, this was $8.99, nine bucks, Canadian. Nice record. Next up, oh, something completely different. You know me, I love different genres. Found this beautiful copy of a Waylon Jennings album. It's just called, it's just called Waylon. No, Black on Black. <laughs> Beautiful uh, embossed silver cover, great shape, um, fantastic. 1982, I'm a Waylon Jennings uh, fan. Uh, he uh, does some great songs on here. Uh, Women Do Know How to Carry On. Uh, we Made It As Lovers, We Just Couldn't Make It As Friends. He does a, a version of uh, Folsom Prison Blues and a uh, nice uh, version of Get Naked With Me. And he does a duet with uh, with uh, Willie uh, Willie Nelson, just to satisfy you. Very great contrast in their uh, vocal styles. They've done a lot of work together, needless to say, as the Outlaws, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, Waylon's got that nice bass, gruff voice, and uh, Willie's got that nice tenor, and they they work well together. So, really uh, happy to find this another Waylon Jennings record. In a similar vein, I've been looking for uh, Jesse Coulter records. I haven't found a, I haven't found a Jesse album in, uh, that's in decent shape yet. Jesse Coulter was married to Waylon Jennings for a number of years. Um, they worked together. Uh, this is 
Waylon and Jesse. It's leather and lace. Um, I haven't listened to this yet, but uh, I don't think it's going to disappoint me. She's got a great voice. She was a, I think she started off as one of his back backup singers. Um, I could be wrong. I'm sure that uh, JT would know all about it. Maybe Mike from MGK, but uh, there we go. Uh, my first Waylon and Jesse, my first Jesse Coulter record. Kind of excited to find that. Another country record, no surprise. Uh, Dwight Yoakam called Hillbilly, Hillbilly Deluxe. That's a fantastic record. I think it's 19, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. 1988, I believe. Um, full of great songs. I've got uh, Dwight Yoakam CDs, but this is my first Dwight Yoakam album. I never see them out in the wild. I never see them in this nice a condition either. Uh, Little Ways, uh, Please Please Baby, Eyes on It, Always Late With Your Kisses, A Thousand Miles is great, uh, Throw It All Time. Uh, doing that Bakersfield sound thing that he does so well, uh, I'm a big Dwight Yoakam fan, and uh, that was that was great to find this. And uh, this is a cheapie as well, $4.99, fantastic. I've been watching Otis Gibbs' uh, channel, I don't know if he... Sub, sub uh, Otis Gibbs, but he uh, he's a musician and he talks to uh, various people in the music industry. He's a musician as well. He talks about his music, but uh, they've been talking up Jerry Reed and telling Jerry Reed stories. Uh, Jerry Reed is a uh, you know kind of a he's a country guy for sure, Nashville guy, Nashville songwriter, a uh, great great guitar player. That's why I'm going to start buying his records. Uh, some great songs on here. Lord, Mr. Ford, he does Folsom Prison Blues as well. Uh, uh, the Lady is a Woman is good, uh, One Sweet Reason. But uh, he, uh, a fine songwriter, doesn't, uh, he does covers as well, but a fine songwriter. And there's a story that uh, he went into the studio once with Elvis Presley and they uh, recorded one of his songs. And after the session, they pulled Jerry Reed aside and said, by the way, if, uh, if you want this record to be released on an Elvis Presley record, you've got to share writing credits with, with Presley. And uh, Jerry said, no, I wrote the song. Well, what were you talking about? I didn't know this was going on. And this, of course, happened all through Elvis Presley's career. And, uh, you know, all you have to do is go along to get along. And, uh, you know, you, you, you get a little cash in your pocket because Elvis sold a lot of records, but he just turned them down flat. And they uh, subsequently, I think, I think they went ahead and released it on the Elvis record. I'm not sure of the, the song, but they released it anyways, and Jerry never had to give away his uh, any of his writing credits. So, Jerry Reed. And this is on uh, Quadra Disc. Next, something a little different. Sorry. And this is a soul, R&B, disco. Ashford and Simpson. I love Ashford and Simpson. They had great voices. They're great writers and producers. Uh, I will uh, pick up any of their albums that I don't have. I collect their records uh, if I see them in a good condition and good price. Uh, this one is uh, on the wheel label. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Spoiled is great. I want to be selfish is fine. Ain't that something? Don't fight it. Um, yeah, Ashford and Simpson. Some great music. Maybe this is my find of the the find of the batch. It's Patti Smith, The Dream of Life. What a fantastic record. This is a 1988 release. Uh, her first release uh, in nine years, I think. She had met uh, uh, Fred Sonic Smith and uh, they got married. And I think she uh, kind of quit the music business for a while. She has, I think they had three kids together. Uh, uh, back in 1988 with uh, with eight new songs uh, produced by uh, Fred Smith, Fred Smith's on guitars, uh, and Jimmy Iovine. So the song that, I mean, it, it was released in 1988, so there's a little bit of that kind of uh, synthy 80s, uh, 80s sound, but nothing that's uh, that is detrimental to this. The uh, songs is like People Have the Power, um, Up There, Down There. Uh, Where Duty Calls, and the last song is beautiful. It's the Jackson song. Um, anyways, this is uh, another addition to my Patti Smith collection. If you don't have Patti Smith's first four records, I 
you should. I mean, they're essential records for anybody's collection. Patty Smith. And last but not least, I'm kind of embarrassed to say I didn't have this in my collection, but I found a, a nice copy of Surre Surrealistic Pillow from the Jefferson Airplane. And I've got like 20 Jefferson Airplane records, uh, and I just, I never bought this one. And uh, I, you don't have to say too much about this. This is a released in 1967. Uh, this is a Canadian re uh, repress from 1969. It's in pretty good condition, pretty good nick. It's a little, some ring wear, as you would expect, but uh, the record is mint. So, uh, of course, you know, White Rabbit and Somebody to Love. Fantastic songs. Uh, so happy to have this in the collection. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on uh, after I finish this while I'm uh, uploading my video. So Jefferson Starship. Oh, not Jefferson Starship, <laughs> I misspoke there. Jefferson Airplane, before they became the Starship and before they kind of wimped out. Great record. Uh, that's all I got, folks. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. All my new subs, thank you so much. Um, I've been, I wouldn't say I've been blowing up, but slowly building up my subscriber base. I want to thank all the people that have given me shout outs, all my buddies out there and all my commentators. Um, I have my regular 20 people or so that always add comments or so. Uh, they're so giving and uh, I, I really love the feedback. So if you uh, have not subscribed to me, uh, why don't you consider doing so? Hit the subscribe button. Give me a comment. I uh, reply to all my comments. I love them. And uh, till next time. Cheers.